This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Blaine Fowler. BYU Sports Nation is live today with play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, January 24th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with a guy coming off of a uh, playoff weekend hangover for football. Blaine Fowler, what a weekend, bro, in the NFL. Yeah, yeah no, like I'm exhausted right now <laughs> because I couldn't sleep last night. That is one of the best weekends of NFL football, of football of any kind, that I have ever seen. My goodness, every single game down to the last play. Four walk-offs. Un- unbelievable. And, like, I couldn't get to sleep last night because the adrenaline of that Chiefs-Bills game was still going. And we were strategizing and, do, you, know, you know, talking about every single play and how this guy fall down and what was that coverage and why did that guy not get outside leverage. I mean, it was crazy. Every play mattered down the stretch of that game. but I know exactly what you're referring it, to when you say fall down and outside, le- like boom, boom. Boom, you know what I'm talking it, about. And it was crazy that three, the first three games of the division round, the road team kicked a field goal to win with right. no time, as time expired. Then the Bills should have won, yeah. but the Chiefs had the anti-Cowboys drive oh. to set up the field goal, 44 yards in 10 seconds. Amazing. Don't call a draw play. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And then they win. I mean, it's, and, and we'll talk about NFL. T rolls in a lot of but conversation. This, this, about is, this is yeah. this is why sports is just so awesome, the right? Because there's so much craziness in the world, especially this last couple of years. And then just for four games, we get to sit down and just immerse ourselves in sports, which you and I get to do all it's the time so because awesome. of what we do. But that's hey, we need that. We needed a weekend like this weekend. How awesome was? It? I just loved it. And I didn't sleep good because I was still jacked up after that game, man. <laughs> Telling you, you're hopped up on Mountain Dew. I was hopped up. Okay, uh, here's the show lineup. Men's hoops keeps crushing it we are about to get the ap top 25 will byu be in i think byu will be i would think oh, yes just in just in yes BYU's one out i thought one byu out. be in byu only moved up one spot didn't quite get in uh perhaps next week yeah that's actually surprising i thought th- I, I thought, thought they'd, they'd get in i thought they'd slip yeah. in i thought they'd slip in this week because uh three teams lost in front and, and at the kind of at the bottom of the top yeah. 25. So Bureau's so. not in. Surprise. But again, top twenty five doesn't actually yeah, yeah, there you go. It's kind of fun. Bureau's twenty five and net. That matters. That more. that makes every one of their games important. Right? Like they're fighting to get into there and they're yes. fighting for it. So every yes. game's a big game, which Absol- I love. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll t- we'll break it down. Is this Mark Pope's best Cougar team? Are they better than 2019-20 right now? We'll talk about it. Caleb Lohner will join us in studio. He's had this offensive reemergence the last couple games. Plus, where would the Cougars fit in the Big 12 this season? Yikes. We'll break down some of the numbers. It is wild. <laughs> Women's Hoops looks to get a twofer of wins in three days versus San Diego and was order restored in the BYU Volleyball Universe this weekend. Let's find out in today's headlines. Well, BYU men's hoops beats Portland 78-65 on Saturday night. Four Cougars scored in double figures, including Caleb Lohner, who's going to be on the show today. Takes a bump on the sideline, nearly foul number seven, gets into the paint, bounce low. Caleb, oh! oh! Caleb reaches back and throws it down! One of the nastiest throwdowns we've seen in a long time. I love that on the baseline. Uh, Fusini Traore had a double-double, 13 points and 10 rebounds. He's turned into a double-double machine. Next up for BYU is Santa Clara on the road this Thursday. The new AP Top 25 is out. BYU is the first team out, as we just mentioned, out of the Top 25. 12 votes behind Davidson, who's in at 25th. That's a little surprising, but hey. Corey's not on Davidson anymore. Something something to play. Another undefeated this week. They'll be in. Santa Clara's 83 in net, so that's quad two. Hoping Santa Clara can be a top 75 team, then that'd be yeah, a quad one. That'd make a difference. So we'll see. Uh, Cougars in the NFL. The game of the year happened between the Chiefs and Bills. Talked about it. Andy Reid and Daniel Sorensen and Zane Anderson and the Chiefs won 42-36 in OT. 17 points scored in the final 154 regulation defense wow. option. Wow. Fred Warner and the Niners walked off the Packers in the snow on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. 13-10 to and perhaps Aaron Rodgers' last game there. And Harvey Longy gets an extension with the Patriots. Congrats to Harvey. So cool. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Love Harvey Longy. He's awesome. He's worked Great hard story. to get to that point. 
Hey, the 17th ranked women's hoops uh, team beat San Diego 74 to 63 Saturday. Shaylee Gonzalez had 29 points and eight rebounds in the win. Um, and uh, Paisley Harding also chipped in 19 and five in that one. The Cougars and Toreros face off again today, this time at the Marriott, or today at the Marriott Center this time. So it's a back-to-back -back on a way in a home in two days. Sabbath observing yeah. and back to back. Which is, you think about it for BYU, but yeah. they're, they're so good, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But they don't practice on Sunday. So they played Saturday. Traveled. Traveled, they play today. They come back night of in, in league. Yeah, so it's like, hey, we'll, we'll do whatever. It doesn't matter. You can watch that game tonight, 7 Eastern, 5 here, Mountain Time on BYU TV. You know what, BYU women are uh, in the net? 14. Yeah. Woo! They'll probably climb in the polls, too. We'll see. Uh, that comes out later today as well. Number 10, men's volleyball beats number 13, UC Irvine, in the home opening matches for the men's volleyball team in five on Friday. Long one. It was awesome. And then in three on Saturday, Davide Gardini had 31 kills in the two wins. The Cougars host Mount Olive, which is in North Carolina, and they make all the pickles in the U.S., most of them, where Mount Olive is from. That's the fun fact of the week. Uh, two matches this week starting Thursday night. Is any program at BYU rolling more than track and field and cross country and that whole group? They're My amazing. goodness. Um, BYU track and field, they recorded five top 10 all-time marks this weekend at the Air Force nice. Invitational. One of the great indoor facilities in the country over at the Academy. Pole vaulter Zach McWhorter recorded the third best indoor vault with a 5.75 meter vault. And Sable L. Bakri set the fourth best BYU all-time mark with a throw of 18.12 meters. El Bakri, El Bakri, where do we know that name? Yeah, that's a familiar BYU yeah. name, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, Gonzaga men fall from one, uh, or fall to two. Auburn leapfrogged them with the Kentucky one. Yeah, I, I thought that that would happen. That was a good one. Gonzaga needs some real motivation to get up for stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now maybe yeah, they'll play Now, now they'll play maybe better. they'll play yeah. good. With yeah. Chip on their shoulder exactly. a little bit. So. Gymnastics scores a season high 196-425 and a loss to the Southern Utah Flippin' Birds. That's a real thing. They go with it. They call, not, they're called I'm the Flippin' Birds? I'm dead serious. Yikes. Thunderbirds? Okay, I, <laughs> I respect that they dare say that. That's all, it's, it's all good. It's no uh, Shakespeare Festival, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Sadie uh, Minor Van Tassel hit a 39 in the all-around for the second week in a row. Fantastic. BYU host Utah State Friday night. Men's tennis had a 6-1 win over Weber State on Saturday. The Cougars home opener this Friday for Eastern Time versus Grand Canyon University. Shaley Gonzalez's parents both went to Grand Canyon. So there you go. There you go. Women's tennis loses to Washington 7-0. Cougars 1-3 on the season. Head to Berkeley this weekend for the ITA kickoff. Yeah, Berkeley's, Berkeley's good. Whole pack, whole pack is good in tennis, so that's a, that's a big challenge. Hey, men's golf starts the spring season today. They tee off in Tucson, Arizona at the Arizona Intercollegiate. They won this event back in 2006. They're trying to go back and, and scratch out another win down Tucson. Let's go. They probably had Daniel Summerhands on that team in 06. 06, yeah. yep. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. On this, the 24th of January, in the year of our Lord, 2022, BYU Men's Hoops is 17-4, and 5-1 and one in West Coast Conference play, 25 in net, just outside the top 25, and now 4-1 and one in Quad 1 games. Over the weekend, we had some quad jumpers. Thank you to St. Mary's, Oregon, Missouri State for joining the Quad 1 party. Blaine, is this the best BYU team in the Mark Pope era here now in year three? They're making a case for that. Which, which is surprising to me when, when Gavin Baxter went down with that knee injury after they already had lost Richie Harwood. I, I thought before the season started, this was absolutely going to be the best team that BYU had because um, I just felt like they had everything. They had inside presence. They had great, great guard play, had great expectations for Lucas. I thought Loner would take a step forward. Like all these pieces were going to be there. Then Harvard goes down and has has an illness that's keeping him out for who knows how long. And then when Baxter goes down with that knee injury, I think, wow, that, that just killed this season. Um, the inside presence, that rim-protecting presence, their ability to rebound, their ability to defend inside. You can't and ask a couple just, of freshmen right. from a different continent like, to I, I, carry I, I, that. I knew who Foos was. I knew who Atiki was. You barely but, say his name. Yeah, like, but how, how are they going to get it done? Well, well guess what? They're getting it done. When, when I talk, every time we do a game, we get to talk to the opposing coach. Yep. Um, that afternoon at Shoot Around, we watch the opposing team practice. And every single coach, without exception, um, starts off with, man, they, like, 
Mark Pope's team, these guys really defend. Like, they really understand how to defend. And, man, they're always there on the catch. They're really good in three-point percentage defense. And if, and if you look, these coaches talk about it. The numbers bear it out. They're number 16 in the country in three-point percentage defense, top 20 team. Um, and then they also go, and, and, you know, I know they don't have the length that they had before, but these guys can rebound. Man, if you don't block out, they're going to get to the offensive glass. They're going to get second chances. They're going to they're gonna keep you to one and duns every time down the floor. This is just a really – physical, really good rebounding basketball team. That's not what you're used to hearing about BYU. You're used to hearing, man, they get up and down the floor, they can really shoot. Every coach starts with they're so good defensively, they can afford to not shoot the ball well and stay in games. You're going to have to scrap to even stay close to them rebounding the ball. And these young guys have stepped up. We talk about Foos, you know, he, another double-double mm -hmm. just, just the other night. He's turning into a monster inside, and he's a great rim protector. We saw Atiki with three blocks the other night. He's he's become a force, especially on the defensive end inside. But, but I love the fact that guys like Caleb Lohner and Gideon George and even Seneca Knight, who's another new face, Alex Barcelo, who's a great rebounding guard, these guys are going down and being part of that rebounding game. And all of a sudden, without Richie Harward and without Gavin Baxter, this team is, is a problem for folks. They're a mismatch because they're so athletic. They're not having pro problems rebounding. And the only game this year that I thought, oh, man, just not having length hurt him was against Gonzaga. Yeah. But who has the length to hang with them anyhow? Chet Holmgren and Andrew Timmy. I mean, like it's just like, they're it's, the best front court in America. Who, who in the country matches up with that? Nobody does, know. right? It's and rough. so so we'll excuse him for that one. Every other matchup, um, they're fantastic. So so that's a long answer, but I think they're setting themselves up the way they're playing right now to be the best team in the Mark Pope era. And that would be quite the deal because let us remind ourselves what the 1920 season ended like. Okay, obviously a loss to St. Mary's was not great in the semifinal by one to Jordan Ford at the last second. But remember, BYU finished nine in net. And had just beaten, you know, two, three games before, number one in net Gonzaga. I don't see this team getting to a top 10 level like that. So that's okay. Um, I think that 1920 team that, that was number one in the country in threes, that was senior heavy, this team feels it's got a backcourt of two six-year seniors, right? I, th this team is, is headed that direction. But I don't think they'll quite get to the – playing like a top 10 team level. Yoli Childs, once BYU got Yoli, you know, after the nine-game garbage suspension. Yeah, that was ridiculous. And you beat Gonzaga. At that point, like BYU going into the NCAA tournament, they're playing like a top 10 team. Again, I know they lost St. Mary's. St. Mary's was good that year. They were going to go to the tourney too. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that this team will get to the top 10 level, but certainly top 20, uh, just outside the top 25, 25 in net. I, this team's really good too. Um, I, I think 1920 was a, a better team. I would love to see that team face that team, this team face that yeah, team. Yeah. That'd be a really fun matchup. But the fact that BYU can be in this situation at all is incredible. More numbers from the team sheet. BYU was 8-8 eight and eight in quad one and two games mm -hmm. in uh, 1920. Right now, because of all the quad jumping that happened, Missouri State, shout out to them, the Bears for beating yeah, Memorial, they're, they're Chicago. They're helping BYU big time. Oregon finally has become Oregon, the top 50, so that's a quad one. And the fact that St. Mary's got up to 28 in it, that home game uh, with BYU uh, and St. Mary's is now quad one. Hopefully it stays that way. That's all great. BYU right now is, has as many quad one and quad two wins as the 1920 team. Right. So they could have more, perhaps, when the dust settles. That's where they could maybe be better. But, man, it's incredible that this team is in this position because of those two injuries. I mean, it's a huge storyline that obvious, obviously we've talked about a lot. But I almost, I almost don't believe it, that you can ask – uh, Fusini Traore and Atiki Ali Atiki, two dudes not even from this continent. We've talked about it. Muslims at a Christian school, totally like culture, different country, continent, religion, that they have embedded themselves in this amazing way and have thrived on and off the court for this team to where they are a top 25 group. It's, it's incredible. And they're a big part of that. But the main part is that you have Alex Barcelo and Tijan Lucas. You have two sixth-year guards, and that cannot be understated. Yeah, and then overstated. guard play. And then here's the thing. I, I'm sorry that I put it all on this, but to me, if we're going to judge a team, it's like we call that 81 team that 
was honored this last weekend, the best team in BYU history, because yes. they went to the Elite Eight. Yes. So what you do in postseason is the mark you leave. <sighs> we'll right? never know in well, 1920. The, the, the we'll mark, never know. I know. That's the mark or you will leave. we in the hereafter? Can it, I, we'll, we'll I want to ask God, what would have happened? There's going to be basketball in the hereafter. Would they have gone we to the Sweet this. 16? <laughs> I, I have a lot of questions. I Dinosaurs. Think, and uh, the 1920. And, and, and if, if Brandon Davies is still playing in 2011, do they go to the Final Four? It's a Final Four team. <laughs> it's a fi- hey, just trust me, that's a Final Four team. <laughs> and and I felt like with Baxter and Harvard, this was a top 12 team. Like when they were 12, um, it felt legit. It it they were a top 12 team. Would they and be there right now if those two were absolutely. healthy? In your opinion? Yeah, I think they'd be in the top 10 right now, because because they I, think they have, I think they have two or three less losses. I think they have one or two losses. Well, uh, at Gonzaga, check. Besides and, and, that, and is maybe there one, one? I don't. I, I think Creighton? they beat Vanderbilt. I think they beat Creighton. Vanderbilt for sure. Creighton yeah. would have been a better matchup. Yeah, yeah. I two at worst right now. So I think they're a top ten team with those guys. Um, they certainly don't lose the UVU. No, I mean they don't lose the UVU if. If Gavin Baxter goes out of the game and they say he just has a strained knee, he's going to continue. I feel like they were battling the flu. But when they found out that he had an ACL tear after he just did that a year ago, I felt like that team, like you could visibly see all emotion just sucked right out of that team. Yeah. And they still went to overtime. So there's no way they lose that game. Yeah. And and so I say they're they're at one or maybe two losses right now. With sitting those two at guys. like seven. And so so, but to your point. All of a sudden, Fuse's had to grow up. Atiki's had to grow up. Loners had to step yes, up. That Seneca, was the best and, thing for them. And so here's here's what I don't know, but I like their trajectory. Yeah. Look what Seneca Knight's done in the last last couple of weeks. Fourteen in back to back games, right? He's coming. He's finally figured out where he fits into this offense. Mm-hmm. Look what Caleb Loner's done in two of his last three games. All of a sudden, he's done some good things. So they're already playing at a really high level. If the trajectory and Fuse just keeps getting better, if if the trajectory continues like this. This team could end up a Sweet 16 basketball team. Then we're going to be talking different about them. We're going to be saying, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's only happened twice. Absolutely. And and it's required a National Player of the Year to do that both times. I'm looking for BYU to do that without having this all-time player (laughs) and, like, top – well, picks in the NBA, like it doesn't always what, require that. What I should have mentioned, Chicago's gone to the Final Four. What like, I should have mentioned that. is, Come on. the coaches talk about D and rebounding, and then they go, and we don't even know how to stop Alex Barcel. So they do have a national level player. <laughs> let's let's face right, it, right? Not they do talk about of the Alex. year, but they do have like a probably third team All American right, on right. the roster. Uh, let's go to our uh, question of the day, which is this: Is this the best BYU team in the Mark Pope era? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. Wait on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I can't wait in like 10 years for us to look back at the show and be like, we only had those three social media platforms. That's right, great. right. Uh, Adam Gibby on Twitter. They're really good, but they don't have the ceiling that the 2019 team had. If Haas, Childs, and Toulson all got hot in the same night, they could beat anyone. I'm not convinced this team is quite there yet. I agree. I think this team's really good this year. I just think, yeah, I agree that the ceiling was pretty high. He had like three of the top, probably. 60 players in BYU history on the yeah, same team. They were great. It you know what great. I mean? Yeah. Like right now, AB is in that category. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone else is. Um, you have a couple maybe top 100s. When, like when Foose is said and done. Uh, yeah, when Foose is. Like yeah. Tijon as the one and done guy is going to be like, he's like one of the top 100 players maybe in BYU yep. history, right? Yep. Um, I'm yeah, with you. I'm with crazy. you. So, well, coming up, can BYU go undefeated the rest of the regular season in both men's and women's hoops? Oh, we're saying BYU's beating Gonzaga at home? Well, we'll see. Okay. And Caleb Lohner joins us. This team has found more offense with him in it the last couple of games. Let's talk to him. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery.
Okay, man. You got this. It's not that bad. Okay, it's a little bad. Just do it. Woo! That was unbelievable. Some things seem scarier than they really are, like buying a home. But your loan officer at Intercap Lending will help you get pre-approved and walk you through every step of the process. Intercap Lending, a name you can trust since 1978. I'm okay. I'm okay. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this and this, and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 17th ranked BYU women's hoops host San Diego tonight in the second game in 72 hours against the Toreros. Watch tonight's game, 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain on BYU TV and the BYU TV app. Do it. This team's amazing. We've been telling you. We've been telling you, man. We're live from Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Jerem Jordan, Blaine Fowler. Our guest in studio now is Caleb Lohner of the men's basketball team, who are just crushing it right now as well. Caleb, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing well. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm good. You, you excited for a baseball season, rocking the Rangers hat here? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Texas it, had some big signings. Uh, yeah. yeah, they did, actually. Yeah. 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 Uh, I know Coach Burgess wasn't happy about one of them. Yes. Uh, the L.A. Corey Seager. Yeah. Coming over, yep. When Caleb came in, I was before we came on. He, he sat down, and I, I was giving him a little bit of a. We were talking in shoot around the other day. Caleb was right right by me, and he made three straight like bottom of the net swishes right from all the way out on the emblem, almost inside of half court. And I I turned to Caleb and said. You have my permission to shoot that anytime you're on the emblem tonight. <laughs> he gave me a thumbs up, so I was expecting that shot. But instead, he, you know, he told me that he he decided to do that base baseline throwdown. He felt like that was yeah. I think that was pretty good. That was yeah. better for the crowd. Yeah, it was better for the crowd. What was that moment like for you? It was a little more flow in the offense with that. You know, <laughs> you need like an end of half situation there. Although, let's be honest, like it feels like three of the past four or five games, you guys have made a bucket in the last like three seconds as we see the yeah, we, we see the one of the first half. Like you guys have been able to execute. We have great plays at the end of the halves. Yeah. I think every single bucket that we've had right before the half has been huge because it's been just kind of like a complete momentum shifter, which has been yes. awesome. Going into halftime, I know it's like a big confidence boost. And St. Mary's was the biggest one. Yeah. Boost laying that in, it was like everyone yeah. was juiced. Yeah. Is that, is that something like it's happened more than once? Is that something that the mindset of this team is, hey, wait a minute, we're not going into the locker room like this. We've got to make some plays down the stretch. Is that a conscious thing, or has it just happened? I think so. I think it's just guys making plays. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of dudes, but T. John making the pass to Seneca. There's a few games ago, Spencer had a steal for a layup. Just guys being yep. super aware of the clock and then just making a play. Okay, do, do you care whether you're a top 25 team or not? This team's just one out. We thought you'd be in. Does that matter to you? Personally, I don't think I think about it, but I mean, as a team and as a collective, yeah, it's it's really cool to look at your team and see that in the net that you're ranked in the top 25. But that that'll matters, come. That matters more than the the opinion based polls. Yes. So AP poll today, you're one yes. out, but 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 you you would say you you would be more you would be more worried about net because that has effect on seeding the NCAA. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, probably. But I mean, at the end of the day, like we're just gonna keep doing our thing, and like I mean, this has happened the last few years, but. We know if we keep winning and we keep playing the way we are, everything's going to turn out fine. Yes, it will. And uh, we we're talking about a few, as Gregor Bell called them, called them quad jumpers. Uh, Missouri State beats Loyola Chicago, jumps into quad one. Oregon, we've been waiting for Oregon to sort of be a better win. Yeah. You know, it's quad one, which is awesome. St. Mary's climbed in the top 30 home game. That's quad one. Do you, are you guys looking at the team sheet uh, as players, or is that more of a coaching staff thing? I think it's more of a coaching thing. I mean... I think as a player, there's already so much you're worrying about. And so <laughs> if you kind of overload your mind with too much stuff, it's probably not a good idea. So we just take it game by game, go on over the game plan, do what we got to do, and yeah. And this team's kind of had to reinvent itself. We talk about Oregon moving into a quad one, and, and that seems like a long, long time ago. Yeah. And 
And since the beginning of the year, you guys started the year, you're probably going to play a lot of three, play some four, um, probably rarely have to play the five because because they'd have Richie there and they'd slide Gavin down. Then you we were lose. for a sec. Yeah. You're yeah. playing a lot of five. Yeah, well, yeah. now I mean, yeah. and now all of a sudden, you know, Richie goes down, um, Gavin has the ACL tear. This team's had to reinvent itself. How, how have you guys been able to just keep this thing on the rails and, con and continue to get better without those two guys? I think just trust in each other. Like, we're all working for the same thing, and we all have the same goals for this team. And, I mean, yeah, we had some rough injuries at the beginning of the year. And even in my spot, I definitely looked at it as like, dang, now I'm probably going to be moved a little bit in a different direction of this team. But for me, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to do what I can to help this team win. I know that everybody has been stepping up on this team to make huge plays and help win games, which I know everyone's seen which, again, just speaks to the character of this team. And, but, yeah, I think we've kind of started to reinvent ourselves, and we're starting to feel this flow, at least personally. That's what I feel, I think. But I think the backbone of all of that is just trusting each other. I think everyone's starting to trust each other more on the offensive end of the floor, on the defensive end of the floor, moving the ball, being in the right spot on defense. So, You, you mentioned that your role's different than it was maybe with Rich and, and, and Gav out there. What do you see your role right now? Like, what, what, do you, what do you need to do to help this team win? I think a little bit of everything. I need a guard. I need to rebound the ball, um, finish around the rim, uh, be, a, like, a leader on the floor, talking to guys. And so I'm kind of happy for that role. Like, I've been, I want to step up in that leadership spot and just keep building off of that. But it's been a fun year. We're talking to Caleb Bloner, sophomore on the BYU Ben's basketball team here on BYU Sports Nation. Walk me through the uh, mental journey you go on of being a freshman, <clears throat> coming in. And, and I don't know if it's everybody like this, but I would imagine in that position you're like, dude, at some point I'm going to be the guy and I'm going <coughs> to average 20 a game or whatever. But that's not always the case, right? Alex Barcelo three seasons ago was a nine-point-a-game guy, fourth option. Now he's like the alpha offensively, right? Um, how, how have you navigated that of like, all right, your role is X, Y, Z, and maybe when you showed up it was ABC? I mean, I think at the end of the day we want to win. And so if my role has to be something that is a little bit different than what I thought it would be to win, I'll do it. And I think that's more important to have the team's agenda than mine because, again, we all got each other's back. Like, we all trust each other. And so to me, that's more important. And that's not to say that you won't be that in the future. Just yeah. right yeah. now. But for right now. That's what this team needs, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and this team seems to, and, and you, you're in the locker room and you're out on the floor, you know way better than us looking from the outside. And we're a little closer than most because we're sitting there with you in practice and those yep. kinds of things. But it seems like everybody has that mentality. Like, hey, whatever I need to do. Seneca Knight was a leading scorer at San Jose State, one of the top scorers in the Mountain West Conference, and he comes and is playing a different role. But, but to a man, does everybody feel the way you do? I think so. And I think everyone's starting to understand, like, hey, if we want to be as good as we can possibly be, this is just what we have to do. And we all talk about sacrifice all the time, and I think it's just a perfect example of guys sacrificing for something bigger than themselves. Mm, that's awesome. And we've seen that on the defensive end, where this, te this team's so good on defense and rebounding. What has it taken to be this good? Uh, practice, practice, tons of film, and then just the same mindset every day in practice and every day in the game. I think we just, it's like a, a beat down of the same things so much that your mind actually starts to accept that's what you have to do. <laughs> like, so, what things are you talking about? Like, going to the glass, talking on defense, like being in the right spots, because in practice, if you're not in the right spots, you're going to get yelled at or you're going to run. But it's just kind of the classic stuff. But we do it so much. We do the same things every day. We work on footwork, we work on defense, we go over the game plan a million times. And so I think just the repetitiveness of that helps us all be in those spots. It, it's interesting, Caleb. I asked, I asked Mark Pope the other day, like, because you guys have had some games where you're not shooting the ball great for stretches, you know, pretty big stretches in the game, yet you continue to get stops and rebound the ball, and you're still in the game. And then you can win it at the end. I go, how does this team keep this mentality? And then he says, well, um, I think these guys understand that we have to do those things or we can't win with this group. So they understand the urgency of it. But then right after that, you guys go to practice. I'm not going to say who it was because it wasn't Caleb. And he said, 
if that's the way you're going to play defense, then why don't you just tell me right now? This is what Mark said. Why don't you just tell me right now and just tell everybody, I just don't want to play, Coach. I don't want to be on the floor. <laughs> I do not want to play. Because it would be easier easier than me sitting here watching you not do it if you would just tell us all that that's what you don't want to do. Yeah. Then the player didn't say anything, and he said, oh, okay, then let's do it then, right? Yeah. And that's not unusual for market practice, right? No. But, I mean, it's again, it's just the same thing, like – if we want to win and if we want to be as good as we got to be, that's important. And so coach is trying to just reiterating like how important that is because we've shown throughout the year like that will win us games. Did you play with Foose at Wasatch for a year or two? I did. How, how, how long that was That team it? had to be ridiculous. Yeah, we were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and Richie Saunders as well. Yeah, right? yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. How, how many years was it with Foose there? I was there about a year and a half because I was only there about half of my junior year. So gotcha. The, the, the That's spring when you showed semester, up. Yeah. Gotcha. So what what was he like when he showed up versus what he's like now? So I got there to Wasatch. I think it was his. He was. He's only been there for about two two and a half years, and he was very very quiet. Like even being around him now, sometimes is like a shock to me, just like how lively he is and the things he says because. I remember two years ago, he, that's just not how he was. And so I think he's just getting more and more comfortable with speaking English and more and more comfortable with, like, being in this position. But I love that dude, man. He's awesome. He had a moment in the Portland game where I, I was like, oh, he feels really comfortable now. He got an, uh, he got an and one, and he, he kind of looked at the guy for a sec, shake, nodding his head. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we've reached another level here. Um, his, his growth potential is, is incredible. What have you seen... And I came kind of become here having been with him for a couple of years. Now. Yeah. I mean, I think he's becoming incredible. Just even his help that he, or all the things he does for this team are just really special. Like there's not a lot, not a lot of guys like Foose that can kind of do it all. Um, and that have such like a good attitude about everything that you do. And every time you see him, he's going to smile. You look at him, he's going to smile. So he, he just brings an energy and a light to this team that I think is really important for us. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that dude's awesome. There's a really cool picture I'm probably going to post. But I have, like, my arm around him, and I'm, like, screaming at him. It, uh, there's all the students holding their little flags and the birthday candles. Right, from Saturday night. That's, yeah. That's cool. Okay, we're I, looking, we're looking, that. we're looking for that on social media today. <laughs> Great that, photo. That's awesome. Um, Santa Clara coming up. S -s -s Sneaky, tough game on the road your thoughts on Santa Clara uh it's gonna be a tough game every road game every game in this league is gonna be a tough game but if we go into this game with the same mentality having prepared the way we do we're gonna be fine well congrats on the success it's been fun to see you break out offensively a little more and hey. uh, we're looking forward to a big game Thursday yeah it'll be fun hey, and, yeah. for, and for the record every time I see like Travis Kelsey and these guys in these NFL games I'm like Caleb could play that spot in the NFL I think I think you'd be an NFL. Team. I dream about that sometimes. So. It's like my guilty pleasure. <laughs> and you're, and you're Especially from with Texas, the Cowboys, football, I'm like, right? they need some help. They need some help. You can play. <laughs> Just put me in. I'll put on 30 Mark, pounds like, and Mark throw it, me the ball. Mark it down when Kalen's Kel done more. When Kalen's done, we know Kalen. We know their offensive coordinator. We know him well, so we're gonna let him know. When Kalen's done with basketball, <laughs> mark it down. We're the first ones that knew he was gonna play in the NFL as a tight end. You could be Jordan Cameron. <laughs> Jordan Cameron was a tight end who played in the NFL. He was a scout squad guy here. Transferred to SC. Switched sports. Went pro bowler. I'm not saying switch, <laughs> you switch heard it, sports or school. You heard it here first when Caleb's playing in the NFL. There's a history We here. talked to him about it. We're going to facilitate it with Kellen Moore. So. <laughs> There's a men's basketball they, player who's played in the NFL. Thanks for being with us, Caleb. Coming yeah, up, no the new Big 12 is stacked. So where does BYU fit in the mix? And Tom Homo or Jack DeMooney? Which BYU personality is more entertaining to watch? Watch football. This is BYU Sports Nation. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. 
Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I watch uh, BYU TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Hey, join us tomorrow for BYU basketball with Mark Pope as the coach and Greg Rebell review the wins over San Diego and Portland. Great week. They'll preview road tilts at Santa Clara and Pacific. That's tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. In the film room, I'm going to hang out with Chris Burgess today and talk about the bigs. So that'll be a fun conversation. It's fun. So yeah. you know, we, I get to go to practice all the time, and, and uh, man, he is so good. Chris Burgess works works with a really guys. good coach. And I, I watch the drills and the coaching. Just he is so good with the tiny little details, mm -hmm. and it's manifest. I mean, you look where Foose has come and where Tiki's come from, and Caleb, and, and Caleb from when they got here to now, and when they got here is not very long ago for Foose and Tiki. Like it's uh, they're on warp speed. Yeah. But but if you go nice to Star Trek, right? yeah, you go to I get it. You go to practice and you watch Chris Burgess work with these guys. Yeah. And you see his attention to detail, and you see these guys nodding their head and getting it right. Um. Yeah, these guys are getting some great coaching. That's gonna be fun for you to be yeah. in the film room with Chris. Yeah. It will be fun for Chris. Not just kidding. Uh, he is playing. I'm Jeremy. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Okay, I'm going to start. We're going to go with how many WCC losses remain for BYU women's and men's hoops in the regular season. So just in conference play. I'm not sure the women will lose. Um, and the men, I'm going to pencil in. If they beat Gonzaga at home, that'd be great. And then maybe one other, maybe. So I'm going to say two total combined. Both teams combined. Both teams Wait, combined two. And you're saying maybe one for the women. No, I'm saying zero. Oh, you're saying you're just you're I don't think they're, they're gonna, not going to lose. I think they're going to the NCAA tournament with one loss. I I think they're that good. Okay, I'm going to agree with you on the women's side. I'm going to agree with you. You know what? I'm going to agree with that. But when do we ever agree on this? Most of the time. No, I I think you're right. This I mean this women's team, um, their only loss right now is to Oklahoma and overtime on the road, right? Yes. Um, and they they just didn't shoot the ball. Oklahoma's well, 31 in there. Yeah. Always 14. They, they just didn't shoot the ball. Wait. This is a team that has wins over Arizona State, Florida State, West Virginia. And by the way, both those teams were ranked when they played them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm with you. The women are not going to lose. No. And, and I'm saying the men, two. Yeah, two. two. Yep, I, th I, think, or I think we're on the same page there. Who's helping BYU men's hoops more right now, Oregon or Missouri State? I, lo I love that Missouri State just gets that that win against Loyola Chicago on Saturday. It was in that 60. Um, but I, th I think before, Oregon right now has won six straight. And I think they're on a trajectory to be who they were. Mm -hmm. When it's all said and done, um, Oregon's going to be good. Then, and they, plus, they've already beaten UCLA and USC. Two which, top five wins which, in the which, same which, week. Which is huge. And so, Two weeks ago. So I think mm. people are taking note. People devalued that Oregon win when they fell kind of off the face there for a few weeks after BYU beat them. And all of a sudden, people are forgetting about that because how they're playing now. Before it's all said and done, that Oregon win is going to end up being one of the biggest wins on BYU's schedule. And all that matters is what the selection committee thinks. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It's all about the metrics, right? And BYU's metrics are really good right yeah, now. Yeah, well, and their net is 49. We're, we're, uh, Missouri State's just 60, so they're Cli Well, it depends where you play. So those are the same yep. right now yep. based on neutral. But, 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 but moving forward, they're going to move up. I'm yep. telling you right now. So, okay, question for you. Has order been restored in the BYU Volleyball universe? Now, it's a little weird, right? BYU lost the first two at Penn State. BYU didn't have Zeomeyer, the setter, or the second outside mix Ramones. Those two guys come back. Boom, BYU beats UC Irvine in uh, two matches. Mix was amazing Saturday. Zio is growing before our eyes as a uh, sophomore. It was good. Now, this team is not last year's team. They're just not. They're younger. They're going to have some growing pains. We saw that the first week against Penn State. But listen, 
the ceiling is is uh, in a nice spot given how well they played Saturday night. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and it, it, it's a team. It's young talent versus experienced talent. I mean, BYU's had experienced talent in the past, but it's young talent. So they're just going to keep getting better. And by the time the year comes to a close and we're in the postseason, let's just see what happens. They'll be right where we need them. Let's right? just see what happens. So there you go. Was that the most entertaining weekend of football ever? Absolutely. <laughs> like there's not even Recency any. bias is it, good. It is not. Yeah. I can't. I, 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 I puzzled and puzzled till my puzzler was sore. And, and Dr. Seuss? It's Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Then the Grinch thought something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas perhaps didn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. So, Blaine yeah. knows a ridiculous amount of Dr. Seuss, by the way, like a stupid amount. It's so awesome. I love That's it. how I warm up before we do get, <laughs> get, my, get my throat and my lips working. We do Dr. Seuss. But um, I can't remember a, a better weekend. And it's funny because right. sometimes I wish you guys could just stay with us um, after. Because Caleb got up. When he went to leave, when we went to the break, b- before we came back to this, and the last thing he said was, was that the greatest weekend of football ever? And we talked about yeah. football during the break. He's from Dallas. Of it, course he loves football. It was God. unbelievable. Texan. It was unbelievable. And uh, and yes, it was the greatest. Ever. I agree. So, all right. At the end of regulation, Chiefs-Bills game, I turned to the family and I said, whoever wins the coin toss is going to win this game. Because I knew the overtime the you know, they rules for the NFL and the way the two offenses were playing. Yes. It just doesn't seem right to me. Yes. So what's your fix for the NFL overtime rules? What would you do? I'm not sure it needs a fix. Uh, maybe it does. I, I think competitively, I would like to see both teams get the ball and have a chance there. Not because of how it played yesterday, just because it's weird that only – it's a weird rule. I wonder if gambling is the uh, reason it doesn't change. <sighs> because now there's going to be too much offense. Now the over hits every time maybe or something. I'm, I'm not and, – and fantasy points and – I'm not exactly sure, but I would love for both teams to have a chance. I don't like the college rule per se. I would say play a quarter. Like soccer plays 30 minutes, period, right? And then if you're finished with that, then you do something else. Maybe you play a full quarter. To me, I just want to see the best players on the field on the field. So, and my team that I was rooting for won, right? So I'm not upset that the Chiefs won. I, I just feel bad that... Buffalo's offense didn't get to come back. Out. Right. So, right. So, so there you go. Yeah, Josh Allen is incredible, man. He's, yeah, he, he's way the, better the, than he was when BYU beat him. The in fact that Josh Allen doesn't play. touch the ball in overtime is, is bothersome. Right. Right. Okay. And finally, who is more entertaining to watch? Watch football. Tom Homer or Jack Demony? Yeah. Wh- because this happened Saturday <laughs> night and Sunday. This is. Look at these guys. <laughs> Tom's watching the Niners beat the Packers, and then. Jack is celebrating what at the time was a go-ahead touchdown against the Chiefs. Later, it was not. Now, Jack claims to not watch football on Sunday. We now know this is a lie. This is a lie. (laughs) This is a lie. It's all a game. So my my thing is it's two different, completely different personalities. So so Jack is certainly more animated. I was right outside that door when Tom walked out, Mm -hmm. and I was afraid he was going to hit me. He, he, was was so, he was so fired up. I thought he was going to hit me. So there you go. There you, you were go. teammates for one year. Your freshman year, his senior yeah, year, right? Yeah, and, 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 and we're brothers. And, and he, I thought he was going to hit a brother after that game. He was so fired <laughs> up. So, All right, coming up, rise and shout to the new version of the 90s San Francisco 49. Okay, wow. We're calling them the 90s Niners. They were pretty good. If BYU men's soups were in the Big 12, where would it fit this year right now? We'll break it down. This is BYU Sports Nation. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you? 
home, or hospital. Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. This veterinarian is healing pets and healing hearts, one story at a time. Dr. Kwan is on a mission to give back by helping the pets of the homeless. He travels around the country to aid anyone in need. But these pets aren't just animals. They're best friends, family members, and a source of comfort to their owners. Watch to see inspiring stories of resilience, friendship, and love, all on Street Vet on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, Jerem Jordan talks with Mark and Leanne Pope in part two about playing for Larry Bird, living in Turkey, why they went from medical school at Columbia University to making less than 30 grand, um, coaching down in Georgia, Georgia Tech. Listen to Georgia. it. Oh, Georgia. Listen to it on the BYU radio app or where podcasts are found. Listen, I didn't even get with them to when he takes the BYU job, or even UVU, I think. We're going to do a you part do, three. You got to do part three. We got to do part we, three. We, we were talking, uh, yeah. Leanne's awesome. You know, she grew up. She's incredible. She grew up in a coach's family, yep. and and so Leanne just gets it. Like, she's awesome. You could not have a better uh, match soulmate for Mark than Leanne. She's, and, she's and amazing. she set uh, a state championship team in high school, so yeah. she's got like oh, a yeah. – uh, like a distributor point guard mentality. Yeah. Yep. So that combo is really interesting. Yep. Uh, Blaine Fowler has a deep blue pot as well. You should go download it. Yeah. That was, was fun. It Jeremy was got to sit down and talk about old times. It was great, man. It was awesome. Okay. Welcome back. We're talking about BYU men's hoops in the Big 12. Obviously, this engagement is fun. Um, so let's talk about if BYU was in the Big 12 this year in hoops. Remember, Texas and Oklahoma in through 25. Where would BYU sit? Okay, so let's talk about it. in the in the net rankings. This is just ridiculous. How good it's a Big Twelve is. The, it's the best basketball league. It's the best basketball league, hands down. Three in the top ten right now of net. Houston at three. Baylor at four. Kansas at seven. Houston at three is a bit surprising. We always talk about Baylor and Kansas. Houston. That hey, how about the evidence for the nineteen twenty team winning at Houston on right. the buzzer beater? Teaching three in the top ten. Six are in the top twenty five. If you included BYU. At 25. Sixth at 25. I mean, here, here's the other thing. All but one road game would be quad one. Every single game. There's no Portland's and Pacifics. I'll tell you that. All three games on a neutral court, the Big 12 turning in Kansas City, would be quad one. It's all quad one and two games. I mean, it would be insane. Yeah, it's, it will it's, be insane. But, but here, and, and we talked to Mark Pope right after the announcement. He and I sat down. We talked a lot about it. And I was like, man. You know, here you're, you're accustomed, and the fans are accustomed. Man, they got to finish at, right behind Gonzaga at, at worst, and to get an at-large bid, right? You got to be two. And then there's some years where maybe Gonzaga, BYU, and St. Mary's are all there. You could finish with being three in the WCC and get in. Now this year, you know, there's a lot of talk about way if, if things go the right way, maybe this could be. It's certainly a three bid league this year, and maybe four for the WCC. But that's oh, it's four right yeah, now. But that's unless, yeah. But, but yeah. this is not normal for the WCC, the, right? So this is the best it's been. Normal is two, right? Three has happened right. three times. Would have been four with twenty. So, so, but with the Big Twelve, six is nothing. Like six teams six in the NCAA bad. tournament is is like what happened to the league this year? We only have six teams <laughs> in in this tournament, and so Crazy. so it's a different mindset. And BYU's not going to go twenty five and whatever um, in, no. in that league. No, but that but that's okay because the level of competition yes. pays off. You get to the NCAA tournament, and then every once in a while, when stars come into alignment, and you usually get the right right guys, you become a Houston, and you're right up there, and you have the ability to get a great seed because of the league you're in and, and a better pathway, and you make it to a Final Four. I do believe that's in the future for BYU. So. Mm, I would love that because BYU yeah. has one of, if not the most, NCAA tournament appearances without a Final Four. Yeah, they're, they're, they're meaning, overdue. Me, yes, meaning BYU is amazing at getting there, but uh, advancing has been a different question. Now, it's going to be interesting because – we are we are going to experience something we haven't before, which is BYU is going to start to lose a few more games because it's just tougher. Yet, if you play 31 regular season games, right, and one or two, maybe three in mm -hmm. in Kansas City, which would be fun to 
be back in that part of the country for BYU after kind of pioneer history and whatnot. Um, you, you're moving back to that space. Is that uh, you, you're going to lose a few more games. If you play 13 non-conference games, Spencer and I have surmised that BYU probably needs to be about 9-4. and four. That way you can go 500 in league mm-hmm. and be 18-13 and 13 and feel like you've got a shot still. 18 gets you in. And, and, and that I, league, 18 typically gets you in. Right? And going 500 in league, um, I you know, initially that might be the goal. Is like, let's have a winning record here. Yeah. Like in football, to me, it's like if you can go 5-4 and four each year in the Big 12, that's probably a good number. Yeah. Um, and then in non-conference, you're open to go at least 3-1. and one, and now you're eight and four as a football team going to that, whatever. That's a that's a good benchmark. Yes. And then and then you have a special year when you've got a senior yes. quarterback and a bunch of guys back. And then that's the year you do what Baylor did just this last year, right? Yes. You try and go in with one ba- loss. Baylor doesn't go do what they Two. did this year every year. No, and, and nor will BYU. Right. Like like how quickly will BYU compete in the Big Twelve in these two sports? It, we'll see. You know what BYU will do once Texas le- – well, Texas and BYU will duke it out in women's volleyball. Right. Like women's hoops, I think, will be will be a solid competitor in that league, right? Um, football it's, and men's hoops, it's going to be interesting because now you're in big boy ball. Like, yeah. it's it's different. I, I will say that, that BYU being independent in football has helped be, because the, the schedule they played these last couple years yes. and they're playing next year, not that far off of what they're going to be playing. Yes, and, and – I've changed my stance on that a little bit, the non-conference, because I didn't know the Big 12 was on the horizon. Right. If it's not, I'm like, well, what's the point of going eight and four, right? But now it's like, oh. Great it, preparation. It was pre- yep. preparation. And, and, and so I think that they're, they're deeper. I think the recruiting class last year and this year um, is, is going to help. They're going to be deeper. And so and I, don't, gotta get better I think too, it's less of an adjustment because yeah. it's not Utah right. who went right from the Mountain West Conference to the Pac-12 that and different. couldn't compete. This is a whole different deal for football. Yep. And, and basketball, it just takes a couple of good, really, really elite-level guys to compete. Yes. So you can turn it in basketball More quicker. individual, so. yes. So. Let's update the resume uh, as we do each day on the show. Nets 25, Ken Palm is 25, 81% chance to make the tourney, 7.38 seed. You guys got to climb in towards a 7 right now. Uh, quad one, again, we mentioned it. Four quad one wins now. There a couple weeks ago, we were saying BYU had no quad right. one wins. Hopefully that holds. Uh, Ross team 45, 30th. And again, BYU just outside the top 25 in the AP poll today. So, man, things are going well. Big games at Santa Clara. Uh, this weekend is sneaky, as you mentioned, and then at Pacific. Yeah, they get they get these two. I think not only do they move up in the net, but they're in the top 25 next week. Next week when that poll comes out, and so <sighs> that should good, be the goal. Man. That's why every game's Life. a big game. Every game's Life's, a big game. So. Life's good here, bro. Yeah. Big 12 coming up. Is, 10 plus wins. Is, is five in net. Is your life good in your double down? Because that's what we're going to talk about. So coming up, <laughs> Spencer and Jerem continue to wow. I'm not talking about it in a good way, okay? It's, it's their double down picks. We're going to talk about that. I'm leaning on my early season lead pretty hard here. And a rise and shout out to Nostalgia. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life. When you live at Trio, less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. I think it's just really inspiring just seeing people help one another. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. I really like Studio C because we can all laugh together. It's actually something that makes us reconnect and brings us closer to our family. I love BYU TV. <laughs> There are things happening in Seyburg. 
care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. Be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Or download the podcast. You just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. How's the USB yet? Because that's how you do it. <laughs> so, You're really high on the... Uh, well, no, I do it like this. And, and don't forget... Keyboard's up above you, your you, chin. You got to subscribe. Yeah. You got to rate to. it. And you got to review the show. You it's illegal, it's illegal not to. Yeah, so just uh, do it. Just in, download the podcast. In and do uh, it, so. Puerto Rico. All right, uh, let's get to our double down picks. I got a big lead. Did I extend it? Did I hold? Did I lose some of it? Let's do it. Number one, BYU will score 80 plus. Just short at 78. Alex Marcello, why don't you make that three at the very end? Put me to 81. Could have done it. Huh? What have you done for me? No, he's done a bunch for me this year. I'm sure. Number two, <laughs> Marcello and Foose combined for 18 plus first half points. Guys, you, I, you, you've got nothing. That's six. You got nothing. I got, I got zero points. Come on. So I'll, I'll represent Spencer here since he's, not, he's no longer with us today. Whoa. He's not here with us today. Oh, okay. Jeez. So Spencer, like that. Portland will not have more than nine points five minutes into the game. Did you not look at this team, how they can shoot? Um, Portland scored his ninth point in 255. Oh, boy. So no point there for Spencer. I would you know. And then, and then the other one was he said Tijon Lucas would have a 3-1 to one assist to turnover ratio or better. Mm. Um, he did have seven assists and only two turnovers. So, so guess what? Spencer gets the lone point. Uh, he gets one four point. Four points available. Nothing for well, you. six points available. If you oh, get that's both, right. if you, you get, get three, both, right? you get three. So, yeah, so six points one are available. Point. One for Spencer, who I represent here. I got I got money in the and, bank. And I'm no, good. And nothing I got you. money in the bank. Uh, I'm up 29-16, and then for some reason we continue to list Jason and Dave, who don't get a pick every game. They only have five. But it makes it look like they're terrible Why? at that. Do you let them pick because they just can't take it if you don't? We're just being nice. You don't let me pick, and I don't care. Yeah, that, like, it's well, just like, you hey, be, I'm not, I'm not if you part were here of on a game day, we'd throw you in there. But see, Jason and Dave, a little more diva <laughs> A little more diva I didn't say that. Our question of the day, is this the best BYU team in the Mark Pope era? Has anyone said yes? Has anyone said yes? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, Aaron Morgan on Twitter. As of now, no. The other teams have done more. However, however, this team has the potential to put it together to be the best team. Defense is definitely the best right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year's was better. Uh, the metrics say that, but okay. If we can get a few more players to step up, this will be the best team. Who do you want to step up? Because I feel like Foose has. Atiki's getting better. Uh, Tijon and Alex are crazy consistent. Um, there's a sort of rotation of who the lead other guard is from uh, Trevenel to Sometimes it's Spencer Johnson. Gideon, sometimes Spencer. It's right now it's yeah. Seneca Knight as yeah. the kind of we backup. We want them all to play great. That's all. Everyone. Every, every guy every plays great. Time, yep. Great. Yep. Today's rise and shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Who gets one? I, first of all, we're going to a shout out to the, the BYU Kansas City Chiefs mm-hmm. with the big guy, most important. Andy, yeah, Andy Reid. Andy when you Reed. point up though and you say big guy, sometimes the big guy. That means no, a I, I went person. like this. Andy. Oh, okay, okay. Andy Reid. Probably so. had a cheeseburger last night. Yeah. Uh, for, who knows? Uh, Fred Warner. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Shout and the 81 Fred. BYU men's basketball team. So that fun was to really see those fun. Guys. Loved it. Our thanks to today's guest, Caleb Warner. Yep. And sorry to Dennis Pitta. We have him in the waiting all the time. We ran out of time again. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. We're playing. I'm Jerem. Shout out to Rashawn Bro to see you tonight. 7 Eastern Women's Hoops. Go Cougs.